The Century Initiative is a group of leading thinkers with a bold idea about the future of Canada's economic prosperity. Grow our population to 100 million in part through immigration. One of the blue ribbon panel members on the Century Initiative is Mark Wiseman of BlackRock. I caught up with him at the Capitalize for Kids conference. I think the important thing to understand is it's actually not about immigration. It's about population growth. So the reality is that much of Canada's economic growth, particularly since the Second World War, has come from the fact that we've gotten larger as a country. We've gotten larger as a result of being larger, we've been able to be more efficient, we've been able to utilize economies of scale, and we have to continue to grow our population if we want to continue to succeed um, as a country. We're a big country, um, and the reality is we're a tiny uh, market in spite of the fact that we're a big country. So the reality is if you look at Canada's demographics today, uh, we will grow uh, on current trend um, to about 50 million people from 37 million today by about 2050. And then we stop growing. Um, and this is a trend that we have to get on top of now. If we stop growing, uh, we will have a smaller economy. If we stop growing, we'll be less important in the world as the rest of the world grows around us. Uh, as we stop growing, we will have less people to support important social programs uh, like health care and education. So the reality is we can afford as a country to have more people, but what's even more important, we require population growth to be able to get us to where we deserve to be uh, as a nation and where our ch children uh, and their children um, deserve to be uh, as a nation. So the goal of 100 million people by 2100 is driven by that underlying demographic and economic need. How we get there is in part, is in part um, through immigration. And the reason it has to be through immigration is because our birth rate also uh, continues to fall. So today our birth rate at about just over 1.5, uh, that's 1.5 uh, children per woman uh, in this country, um, if you do the math, is obviously insufficient um, to even keep population at current levels. So we'll actually depopulate um, if we don't bring more people in. And, I mean, the, obviously the goal walks back from that, you know, to that lofty goal of 2100 to 500,000 within sort of five years' time. If you think about where we are today, there are people, and we just had an election campaign and some were out arguing this, that, that we're already hitting kind of maximum levels of absorption, that we're not ready for even the 350,000 that we accept now. You're proposing, the initiative proposes a bunch of changes to help us get there. How much do those foster growth and how much are they pretty big ticket items for Canada to swallow? Well, the first thing I would say is that we are known globally. And I go around the world as part of what I, I do uh, day in and day out and meet people uh, in other countries. And Canada is a beacon for the world in terms of how we bring people into this country, how we integrate them. And by the way, the statistics bear that out. So if you look at um, unemployment rates uh, among immigrants five years out, uh, in fact, those rates are better than they are for people that were uh, born and raised in this country. If you look at educational attainment uh, of the children uh, of immigrants, if you look at um, the taxes and um, the support that immigrants provide to our social programs, not taking from them what they provide to it, um, they are a net contributor um, Although none of that's ever been tested at scale, right? That's always well, been... Well, we are, but Amanda, we are testing this at scale at uh, close to 1% of our population uh, today. So, so we're doing well. Now, it doesn't mean we don't have to do more. We have to ensure that we have the right type of infrastructure in our cities um, to support bigger cities. We have to think ahead. We have to think long term. Um, it would be great if we had built in this city, in Toronto, um, the Eglinton um, subway um, before we built the street uh, on top of it. Um, we should have been thinking ahead. So we have to think ahead in terms of transit. We have to think ahead in terms of housing. And that's one of the things um, that we uh, propose. We have to think ahead in terms of education. We have to think ahead, very, very importantly, um, about um, early childhood support. We need to ensure that we have a fully deployed workforce, um, including um, making sure that women are fully um, deployed into the Canadian workforce. Uh, and in order to do that, we need a national child care strategy in our view. So all of those things have to come together along with immigration. But we are going to let um, less people into this country this year 
um, than we did on the eve of the First World War, when our population um, was less than one-fifth of what it is today. So Canada has an amazing history and an amazing track record of integrating people into our society. And actually, all we have to do if we start acting today um, is increase by about 20 to 30 percent from what we are doing today. And then we get what's known in investing is the compounding effect. Because if we bring in more younger immigrants today as part of the process of getting to 100 million, those immigrants will have children, those children will have children, um, et cetera. The longer we wait, the bigger the problem becomes. One of the things that was evident in this federal election was that there's an economic divide. We see it as a political divide, but it's really an economic divide in this country at the moment. There are parts of the country that are doing better than others, and some that are really suffering. Because you ran CPP, because you have a global view of investing, what is your lens on Canada now? I mean, we think of sort of the, the chill on foreign investment in the energy sector. Does the brighter picture elsewhere outweigh that? Well, I think the reality is, is that we have to be able to shift our economy in Canada um, in, order to, um, in order to capitalize on, on the new reality. And that's not to say it's not important for us to figure out how to um, exploit our natural resources uh, effectively. Um, it's not to say that we shouldn't figure out how to get our natural resources um, to, uh, to market. Um, but at the same time, the greatest resource in this country and where global economies are moving is our human capital. And so what we really have to ensure that we're doing is investing in our human capital and utilizing that human capital to actually be able to take advantage of those efficiencies in other parts of, uh, of our economy, including uh, the development of more environmental technologies as it relates um, to the energy sector, et cetera, et cetera. I, I am incredibly optimistic um, on Canada. I'm incredibly optimistic um, in terms of the Canadian economy. And I'm, I'm optimistic because we have such a fantastic base of human capital uh, on, what, on what to build. And that, in, in the modern economy, by the way, that is what's going to differentiate the countries sure. that win and the countries that lose. Would you put another dollar into the energy sector today, though? I think we have to continue um, to invest responsibly um, in the Canadian uh, energy sector. I think that's part of our, uh, our responsibility.